Hey, what up, y'all? It's your boy, Black Captain, stepping on the mic once again. We're back with some Mass Effect. Two ass. Two us. Dose, the number two. Look at this water. I, see, I feel a little more connected with the water in the first game. A lot of things in a cube here. I'm not sure this is an Iceland, whatever. Anyway, we're back. We got our people in the darkness, cover of night. I don't know what this is. I guess it's a fan, but looks like a... Like a reverse ice cream fondue maker. Anyway, let us be going. There's something to salvage out there, but I can't get there just yet. I think we go through from this this early way. Open door. Looks like everyone just got up and left right in the middle of dinner. Some um, Mass Effect One artifacts around here. walkway there. So I'm bothered to create that even though I don't think you can go there. Strange. What is no this? bodies, no structural damage, and no signs of battle. Looks like you can build a pod racer here. Uh, there was something I can salvage, but I don't s I see it. There it is. Give me you. Uh, nothing up there. Open door. Now I have the rest of my weaponry here. So let's go ahead. Now you see they've got armor. So this is where the fire is going to come in handy. Headshot. Headshot. I missed. I should be using my adrenaline. You got that. I don't need to use that. Let's go with the shoddy. Someone reprogrammed them to attack on site. We're not alone here. Not alone. Alright. Heading here. Love this shotgun. The squirt gun doesn't look all that much in this game. Never does. Wall bypass and a med kit. What? Huh. Wait, is that a seat? Never the thinnest booty person of all time. Uh, no, no, exit. You two, right? Or you two? Yep. You two, for sure. And then the last one. Give me you. Credits? How, don't have much of a use for that right now. Attention right! Uh... I need to be careful. Look at that! <laughs> uh, I don't think there's anywhere else we need to go. Quarians! Praza! Tally! You know who that is. Shepard? I'm not taking any chances with Cerberus operatives. Put those weapons down! Shepard? Is that... You're alive? Remember when I gave you that get data tally? Did it help you complete your pilgrimage? Yes, it did. Fraza, weapons down. This is definitely you know. a shepherd. Why is your old commander working for Cerberus? I don't know. Maybe we should ask. Cerberus rebuilt me, but I'm not taking their orders. We can discuss the specifics once I know why I you're meant here. the first option. One of our people was here on pilgrimage. His name was Vitor. 
We came to find him. His name was Vitor. If Vitor survived the attack, he may be able to tell us what happened. That's the hope. We've seen him, but he might not be in the best state to answer questions. He was injured and uh, nervous around. She means that he was unstable. Combine that with damage to his suit CO2 scrubbers and an infection from an open air exposure, and he's likely delirious. Sounds good. When he saw us landing, he hid in a warehouse on the far side of town. We suspect he also programmed the mechs to attack anything that moved. You should head back to your ship, Tally. We'll let you know when we find Vitor. Like hell. I'm not letting Cerberus take over. Neither am I, Praza. There are too many drones out there. You'll need two teams to get past them. And it would be a gesture of goodwill for my people. Head for the warehouse through the center of the colony. We'll circle around the far side and draw off some of the drones to clear you a path. Make sure to keep in radio contact. Will do. Good luck, Shepard. Whatever happens, it's good to have you back. I meant to pick the middle option. I'm messing up when it comes to these options. Right. What is that? I guess whoever that person's well, their lung wasn't working. Uh, I feel like we should go with the assault rifle. Careful, Give me you. There's a squad of security drones up ahead. Thanks for the warning. We'll take care of them. All right. We've been spotted. Didn't even notice that guy. I don't think you two are connected. I think you, yeah, you and you, you two. Doesn't hurt to go after the easy ones first, you know, because it gets down to a process of eliminate and elimination. Door. Use overload on. Overload on. There we go. Destroying their shields is ends it real quick. All they have are shields. One. Praza and his squad rushed on ahead. I told them to wait, but they wouldn't listen. They want to find Vitor and take him away before you get here. We should have expected this. Come on, we can still cast. One less or no more. All right. Now let's just have our sniper rifle out. It's always not. It's always not a bad idea. This is a gallery, I'm just letting you know right now. But they're not here yet. Why do I have to fire ammo? We need this. Alright. Get our you. Sorry, my space bar is sticking. I need you to do that. What a shot. Oh gosh, come on. They're like doing damage over time. Like periodically they'll get a damage. Give me that. Vitor reprogrammed the heavy neck. It's tearing Praza's squad apart. They did want 
to get to Vito first. Get your squad into cover, and I'll open the loading bay doors. We'll take cover by the doors. Shepard, you take point. Is there more ammo around here? Y'all see ammo clips? Wait. There we go. Oh, and stuff. Take point, Shepard. We'll cover the door. Tell me what to do one more again. I need ammo. That is that stuff right here is premium. All right. Uh, you can go there. you take point. You go over there. Short. There's a friend. One tough son of a bitch to take down. But we'll do it. Alright, so we want. Yeah, overload it. Damage. Uh, I don't think you're going to be able to do anything other than that. Uh oh. That'll work. Okay. Oh yeah, I meant to use the my grenade launcher, but I chose not to. I don't think it's this one. It's none of those. I think you're here. This is a tough one. That's gotta be the most complex one I've ever seen. Okay. Iridium. Now what's this? Heavy weapon research. There's a thing of a thing of stones around here. Um No, not there yet. Gosh stuck. Tally's over there. Give me you. This is your chance to go find Vitor while I tend to the wounded shepherd. He's probably somewhere in the back of the loading bay. Probably. Hold on a second. I thought, uh... Oh, they made it so you can't destroy those. All targets eliminated. Monsters coming back. Mechs will protect. Safe from swarms. Have to hide. No monsters. No swarms. No, 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 no. Vitor? No Vitor. Not here. Swarms can't find. Monsters coming. Have to hide. Hey, I'm talking to you. Great. We come all this way and our only witness is a babbling idiot. This 
swarm's coming. Storm coming. Storm of swarms. Next one. Wake up. That worked. You're not one of them. You're human. They they didn't find you? Who didn't find us? The the monsters. The swarms. They took everyone. Why didn't the colonists fight back, Vitor? What happened? You don't know. You didn't see. But I see everything. Looks like security footage. He must have pieced it together manually. What the hell is that? My god. I think it's a collector. I thought the collectors kept it themselves. They usually work through intermediaries, like slavers or hired mercenaries. If they're involved with the Reapers somehow, it could explain what happened to the colonies. The collectors have advanced technology. They could have a weapon that disables an entire settlement at once. The Seeker swarms. No one can hide. The Seekers find you, freeze you. Then the monsters take you away. Tell me more about these swarms. It's how they find you. Seeker clouds, machines like tiny insects. They go everywhere. They find you, then they sting you, freeze you. Sounds like miniature probes, maybe. Find victims, then immobilize them with a stasis field or nerve toxin. I want to know more about the Collectors. Nobody knows much. They're so rare, a lot of people don't even believe they exist. More importantly, why are they abducting human colonists? What are they after? Maybe the elusive man can figure it out. Why didn't the Collectors take you? Swarms didn't find me. Monsters didn't know I was here. The Collectors aren't known for being careless. Maybe his Enviro suit kept him from showing up on their sensors. Or they were using technology specifically designed to detect humans. Only human colonies have been hit. What happened next? The monsters took the people onto the ship, and then they left. The ship flew away. But they'll be back for me. No one escapes. I think that's probably all we're getting out of him, Commander. We appreciate what you told us. You were very helpful. I studied them. The monsters. The swarms. I recorded them with my Omni tool. Lots of readings. Electromagnetic. Dark energy. We need to get this data to the elusive man. Grab the quarry and call the shuttle to come pick us up. What? Vitor is injured. He needs treatment, not an interrogation. We won't hurt him. We just need to see if he knows anything else. He'll be returned unharmed. Your people tried to betray us once already. If we give him to you, we'll never get the intel we need. Praza was an idiot, and he and his men paid for it. You're welcome to take Vitor's Omnitool data, but please, just let me take him. You don't have to take Vitor and go. We could work together, just like old times. I want to, but I can't. I've got a mission of my own. It's too important for me to abandon, even for you. When it's over, and I'm still alive, we'll see what happens. That sounds dangerous. What are you doing? I don't think Cerberus needs to hear about it. But it's in Geth space. That should tell you how important it is. He's traumatized and he needs medical care. Tally will give us the Omnitool data and take him to the flotilla. Understood, Commander. Thank you, Shepard. I'm glad you're still the one giving the orders. Good luck out there. If I find anything that can help you, I'll let you know. We're ready for pickup. Shepard, good work on Freedom's progress. The Quarians forwarded their findings from Vidor's debriefing. No new data, but it's a surprising olive branch given our history. You and I have different methods, but I can't argue with your results. The data from his Omnitool should be quite useful. We're still analyzing it. But more importantly, you confirm the Collectors are behind the abductions. Tell me what you know about these Collectors. They periodically travel to the Terminus systems, looking to gather seemingly unimportant items or specimens, usually in exchange for their technology. When their transactions are complete, they disappear as quickly as they arrived, 
back beyond the unmapped Omega-4 relay. Until now, we've had no evidence of direct aggression by the Collectors. Why is the Omega-4 relay unmapped? What do we know about it? Only that no ship passing through it has ever returned. Our best guess is that the relay reacts differently to Collector vessels, allowing them safe passage. If they can manipulate relays, that's just further evidence of the connection with the Reapers. What are the Collectors getting from these deals? The Collectors aren't very forthcoming about their motives. Generally, they seek out species with rare genetic mutations or abnormalities. They pay slavers and work groups exorbitant sums to obtain these specimens, and then they leave. But they've never targeted a single species before, and the previous sample sizes were in the dozens, not the tens of thousands. Any ideas on why they've shifted their focus to humans? If they're agents for the Reapers, it could be any number of reasons. Obviously, humanity played a huge role in Sovereign's destruction. That might have been enough to draw their attention. What really concerns me is why they bother abducting the colonists. Once the humans are paralyzed, why not just kill them? You're holding something back. How do you know the Reapers are involved? The patterns are there, buried in the data. The Council and the Alliance want to believe the Reaper threat died with Sovereign. You and I know better. I won't wait until the Reapers are on the march. We need to take the fight to them. If this is a war, I'll need an army. Or a really good team. I've already compiled a list of soldiers, scientists, and mercenaries. You'll get dossiers on the best of them. Finding them and convincing them to work with you could be challenging, but you're a natural leader. I'll continue to track the Collectors. When they make their next appearance, I'll notify you and your team. Be ready. Keep your list. I want people I trust. The ones who helped me stop Saren and the Get. That was two years ago, Commander. Most of them have moved on, or their allegiances have changed. Where's Ashley Williams? She's still with the Alliance. Promoted, I believe. Her file is surprisingly well classified. Where's Garrus Vicarian? The Turian disappeared a few months after you were declared dead. Even we haven't been able to locate him. Where's Erdnot Rex? He returned to Chichanka, and he hasn't gone off-world in over a year. He's trying to unite the Krogan clans. What about Tally? She already helped us on Freedom's Progress. That was unexpected. I need more intel before I'll commit to that. Where's Liara Tsasoni? She's on Ilium. My sources say that she's working for the Shadow Broker. If so, she can't be trusted. Okay, I get it. They're not available. You're a leader, Shepard. You'll get who you need. You worry about the Collectors. I'll make sure my team's ready. Good. Two things before you go. First, head to Omega and find Morden Solis. He's a brilliant Solarian scientist. Our intelligence suggests he may know how to counteract the Collector's paralyzing seeker swarms. Sounds good. What else? I found a pilot I think you might like. I hear he's one of the best. Someone you can trust. One of the best. Hey, Commander. Just like old times, huh? There he is. I can't believe it's you, Joker. Look who's talking. I saw you get spaced. Got lucky, with a lot of strings attached. How'd you get here? It all fell apart without you, Commander. Everything you stirred up, the Council just wanted it gone. The team was broken up, record sealed, and I was grounded. The Alliance took away the one thing that mattered to me. Hell yeah, I joined Cerberus. You really trust the elusive man? Well, I don't trust anyone who makes more than I do. But they aren't all bad. Saved your life. Let me fly. And there's this. They only told me last night. What do we have here? The SR2, huh? What does that stand for? Service Record 2? Street Racer Z, I don't know. Well, it's got the horns. Looks like the Normandy to me. Good to be home, huh, Commander? I guess we'll have to give her a name. I don't know why they bothered. Oh, okay, I see. So they 
this is a di this is a different type of ship and they painted the Normandy on there before we left I guess that's what it is Mission summary. I think it shows like the important decisions that I made. All right, I'm a heavy weapon ammo. Exit though. I'm guessing that's showing where I'm going. So this thing kind of takes off, and. I don't know how it enters the Normandy, but it does. Very similar. Dossiers. I'd strongly recommend starting by acquiring Morden Solus, the Salarian professor on Omega. We know the collectors use some type of advanced technology to immobilize their victims. We'll need him to develop a countermeasure to protect us. Without that countermeasure, we'll be helpless if we ever run into the collectors. Acquiring Professor Solus seems like the most logical place to start. Who are you? I am the Normandy's artificial intelligence. The crew like to refer to me as Edie. Hmm. Helmsmen aren't happy when someone takes control of a ship away from them. Especially Joker. I do not helm the ship. Mr. Moreau's talents will not go to waste. During combat, I operate the electronic warfare and cyber warfare suites. Beyond that, I cannot interface with the ship's systems. I observe and offer analysis and advice. Nothing more. Alright. I'm guessing it takes more than just the three of us plus Joker to fly this ship. The Normandy has a full crew. They're at the stations awaiting your orders. Final preparations for takeoff are complete, Commander. When you're ready to go, just pick a destination from the galaxy map and the CIC and I'll plot a course. Jacob and I should return to our posts. Come find us if you have any questions. This guy. <laughs> Alright, yeah, yeah, all the other stuff. We'll we'll get the tour uh on our own time like now so here we go on the ss normandy deluxe captain ship of the black and i get some goodness and where can i see my interesting paragon renegade are more or less the same so it's not like i can actually tell all right can you believe this, Commander? It's my baby. Better than new. It fits me like a glove. And leather seats. Military may set the hardware standard, but on a first-gen frigate, they could care less if the seats breathe. Civilian sector comfort by design. The reproduction is not intended to be perfect, Mr. Moreau. Seamless improvements were made. And there's the downside. I liked the Normandy when she was beautiful and quiet. Now she's got this thing I don't want to talk about. It's like ship cancer. <laughs> Ridiculous. I don't trust them. We still need to move ahead, but it's all too convenient. Maybe you're right. I guess it's hard to argue when they install an AI to spy on us. We're staying though, right? I mean, this seat is real leather. Good to see you're keeping it all in perspective, Joker. Uh, leather? <laughs> He's ridiculous. Yes, Shepard. I want to know more about the people I'm working with. Much of that data is classified. Do you have a specific inquiry? How did Cerberus replicate the most advanced warship in the Alliance Navy without anyone knowing? I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. Wonderful. What do you mean? Although I am less controlled than other AI, 
I am still subject to behavioral blocks and the physical isolation of my hardware. In this case, I am prevented from truthfully answering your question by Cerberus's levels of secret classification. What sort of resources does Cerberus have? Money, personnel, facilities? I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. <laughs> How is Cerberus organized? Aside from the elusive man, I don't see much chain of command. Cerberus is organized into task-oriented cells. Each operates in isolation. Members from one cell cannot recognize the members of another. Each cell's agents are led by a single operator. We are called the Lazarus cell, which is directed by operator Lawson. Lawson. Is that Ashley? I think that's a... Let's discuss something else. Ready. I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? How are you getting along with Joker? Mr. Moreau does not trust me. It offends him that I am installed aboard his ship's computers. Yeah, the last Normandy did just fine without an AI reminding me the airlock is ajar. What do you do aboard the ship? I operate the ship's electronic and cyber warfare suites in combat. My reaction time is much faster than any organic. I collate the records of shipboard monitoring devices for the elusive man. I serve additional functions which are restricted at this time. Restricted functions? Like what? Classified? I do not know. Some of my databases are sealed. Some of my hardware is kept offline. I assume that when certain unknown conditions are met, those functions will be released to me. Cyber warfare means things like viruses, right? In close range ship to ship combat, I can sometimes break through the firewalls of an enemy's internal wireless network. Once I seize control of their systems, I can turn off gravity or air. I can disable weapons guidance or shields, or I can put their fusion plant in meltdown. On the defense, I manage Normandy's own suite of jammers, decoys, and internal firewalls. The elusive man has monitoring devices on board? Of course. He has invested most of Cerberus's resources into the design and construction of this ship. He has an interest in monitoring our progress. Let's discuss something Ready. else. That's all for now. Logging you out. I didn't get the... Yes, Shepard. I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? Why are you named Edie? Edie is the phonetic pronunciation of E-D-I. That is an acronym for Enhanced Defense Intelligence. Where are you? My core intelligence is housed in a quantum blue box located behind the medical bay. That's all for now. Logging you out. Yeah, I was, that was like the one thing I was missing was the whole thing. Oh, hey. Intel? Alright. Let's talk to Yeoman Chambers. I'm Yeoman Kelly Chambers. I've been assigned as your administrative assistant. I'll manage your messages and help you monitor the crew. That hair is out of place. Say, it's such an honor to work under you, Commander Shepard. I'm glad to have you on the team, Miss Chambers. Please, call me Kelly. Let's keep this professional, Yeoman. Yes, sir. Anything else, Commander? Do you have a moment to talk? I always have time for you, Commander. What are your responsibilities? I'll keep you notified of any messages or appointments you might have. If any of the crew has important business to discuss, I'll make sure you know. Yo! Bang, bang. Isn't that the type of task better suited for a VI? Yes, but being your yeoman is just my official role. Unofficially, I observe the crew. Everyone knows how risky our mission is. Many of us may not be coming back. That's a lot of pressure. I have a degree in psychology. I'm good at sensing when people are overly Psychomology, yeah? You make sure the crew's mental health is sound? Yes. I look for warning signs. I listen. It's not a full-time job, and it's most effective when done informally. I don't need you analyzing me, Yeoman. Yes, sir. Anything else? Stay away from my brain. You have a moment to talk? I always have time for you, Commander. This organization has a dark reputation. Do you have any concerns working for them? Not at all. Our methods can be harsh, but Cerberus has noble objectives. We look out for human interests, advance human technology, save human lives. They're good goals. They don't hate aliens. What are your responsibilities? I'll keep you notified. If any of the crew has important business to discuss, I'll make sure you know. How do you feel about being assigned to the Normandy? I was handpicked by the elusive man to help fight the greatest threat known to humanity. How do I feel? Honored, exhilarated, terrified. But mostly I feel encouraged. 
Under your leadership, we can't fail. Um, there's one thing. Okay, so if I do what this, if any of the crew has important business to discuss, return. I'll make sure you know. Ever? I have a degree in psychology. I'm good at sensing when people are overly taxed. This. I look for warning signs. This. Anything else? This. Is there anything I should know? You received a private message through Cerberus channels. I believe it's from Admiral Anderson. You can access it at your private terminal over there. Anything else, Commander? That'll be all. Yes, Commander. All right. Uh, that's the elevator. A scientist oh, is required can't to go the there. Laboratory. Welcome aboard, Commander. I'm already here. How are you going to tell me welcome aboard now? I don't think there's anything for me to do here. Nah. This is where you change your weapons. There's my heavy ordnance as I unlock stuff. I'll be able to do that. These are some weapons. I'm assuming they're more or less the... Uh, I don't have those, that, that bottom weapon. And these are all the same. Sniper rifles. Uh huh. Cool, cool. Oh, and then there's Edie. Is it moving or reverberating? I can't. I take. I press one. I press the direction once. He takes like five steps. It sure is moving. All right, Jacob. Commander, there hasn't been time to really settle in and take stock. I want to say that working with you is a great opportunity to do something that matters. It's a privilege to serve on the Normandy, Commander. You're here because you're Cerberus. Don't expect special treatment. Understood. But not everyone in the group is hardline. I'm an employee because I believe in their current direction. Doesn't mean I don't have concerns about their past actions. Or some of yours. You watch me, I'll watch you. That suits you? What has Cerberus done to make you nervous? A lot. They've been called terrorists, and with good reason. Doubt you can find a more checkered past. But if the Collector threat is real, and we do something about it, Cerberus will be remembered differently. Or we'll all be tried and executed. Can't count on people thinking about it as hard as I have. It's good to hear a clear opinion. Sounds like we're two of a kind. That honors me more than you, Commander. Let me know if you need anything. What is he doing? Ugh, Paragon. Uh, briefing room. There's nothing in here, but let's just get Edie to say something. What's this area of the ship? This is the FTL communications room. Faster than light. to interfacing with the FTL comm network, Normandy is fitted with a quantum entanglement communicator linked to the elusive man's office. This allows lag-free communication even when you operate off the comm grid. Why aren't these used everywhere? Each quantum pair costs nearly as much as a comm relay, and can pass only one quantum bit of data at a time. In addition to the cost and bandwidth issues, the system is strictly point to point. To contact a hundred different worlds, we would need to manufacture and install a hundred entangled pairs, one linked to each world. That's all for now. Logging you out, Shepard. Okay. Don't think uh, I necessarily care about that stuff, but... It was included, so I appreciate the attention to detail. Commander, there's a message waiting at your private terminal. What's this area of the ship? This is the Combat Information Center. Here, the crew receives sensor data and coordinates gunnery and damage control efforts. While Normandy is flown from the bridge, during combat, the commanding officer issues orders from the CIC. Combat Information Center. All right, let's go to my deck. What's this area of the ship? This is the commanding officer's quarters. It's larger than the quarters of other warships I've served on. This is a Cerberus vessel, not an Alliance warship. Accommodations have been made for personal taste. That said, this space is directly under the exterior pressure hall. The fitting yard workers called it the loft. All right. Got my achievements, and then we've got the lady fan right there. Game when you complete the romance thing, or at least get pretty far. I think I had a picture of Ashley even uh, in my previous playthrough, even though I didn't get to the get down. <laughs> at least I don't believe I did in my first playthrough, because uh, I sacrificed her. 
Let's see here. Private terminal. Upgrades. I don't care about that. Unread messages. Mr. Anderson. Oopsie. Oh. Archive messages. Now, who saw me, though? That's my thing. Who saw... Who was enough to, like, reported to have seen me? No. Nah. No. This is what I normally had. Yeah, we'll go to this. was my old stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and put the put the ra the the ragtag look. Why the heck not? All right. It's 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 more fitting to uh, to this. Go ahead and show you what I already have. This is all from the uh, just playing the game. All right. How's oh, yeah. Right. Next up, I would have liked to have been able to color the the armor, the casual armor, but you can't. Right. Cruise quarters. Those are restrooms. Oh, she's a cutie. How old? Ah, uh, she'll be a year old next month. Oh, you'll miss her first birthday. Family lives in New Canton. Oh, uh, that colony's on the edge of the frontier. Could be vulnerable to collector attack, couldn't it? Exactly. It's most important that she have a first birthday. That's why I'm here. All right. That's Edie looking like a, the Death Star. And there's nothing special about these restrooms. I don't know why they. I mean, I don't know why they bothered. But they did bother, so okay. Uh, elevator. This used to be my room, the old room for the captain. It's Miranda's office now. And she has desk books. I feel like her bed's got more pillows than mine did. I don't know what this is to. I think it's the shield. Interesting. I want that chair. Commander, what can I do for you? Anything I should know regarding the Normandy? The crew's working well, and the ship appears to be performing to specifications. What exactly are your duties, aside from keeping an eye on me? I'm the elusive man's agent. You're his most important asset. My job is to make sure you succeed. Aside from that, I send regular reports to the elusive man, updating our status. You have a minute, Miranda? No doubt you've got a lot of questions. Cerberus isn't as evil as most people believe. If I can help allay any of your concerns, I'd be happy to do so. So, what would you like to do? One thing I know, she's got these dead, dead inside eyes. Uh, let's go with you. What can you tell me about the elusive man? Not much that you don't already know. Even I don't have access to most of his background. And you've seen more of him than most ever do. It's rare for him to become directly involved in missions, but you're something special. Whatever else people might say about him, I can assure you he's got humanity's best interests at heart. That includes you and me. How can you be sure of that if you know so little about him? I didn't get to where I am without knowing how to gauge people's motives and ambitions. Even from brief encounters. He's no saint, and he'd be the first to admit it. But he is committed. Humanity couldn't have a better advocate. Are you military, or political? Or both? Cerberus has several divisions. Political, military, scientific, but we're all working towards the same goal. We keep our ranks and structures similar to the Alliance. A lot of our recruits started there, but not all Cerberus operations use the same protocols. We try not to get bogged down in bureaucracy or formality. I know what we're doing here, but what's Cerberus's long-term goal? The advancement of the human race. Nothing more, nothing less. The Salarians have the special tasks group. The Asari have their legendary commandos for stealth and recon operations. 
Cerberus is humanity's answer to those organizations. But those organizations are regulated by governments. Who keeps Cerberus in check? Nobody. We're privately funded and our backers trust the elusive man to make the right decisions. But he's very clear about our goals. Protect humanity and serve its advancement. What kind of resources does Cerberus have? We're very well funded, though I doubt anyone other than the elusive man knows exactly how well. But our resources aren't unlimited. Reviving you and rebuilding the Normandy was a significant investment, and a significant risk. We're all hoping you can do the impossible, Shepard. No pressure. Tell me about yourself, Miranda. Oh, I guess that's fair. I've spent the last two years learning everything there is to know about you. Well, you should probably know that I've had extensive genetic modification. Not my decision, but I make the most of it. It's one of the reasons the elusive man handpicked me. I'm very good at just about anything I choose to do. What level of genetic modification are we talking about? That's very thorough. Physically, I'm superior in many ways. I heal quickly and I'll likely live half again as long as the average human. My biotic abilities are also very advanced. For a human. Add to that some of the best training and education money can buy and... Well, it's pretty impressive, really. You certainly don't lack for confidence. It's just a fact. My reflexes, my strength, even my looks, they're all designed to give me an edge. Ridiculous. No point in hiding from it. It's the reason I'm trusted to oversee the most dangerous, risky, and technically demanding operations Cerberus undertakes. And it's why I was assigned to you. It's my job to make sure you succeed, Shepard. Your looks were genetically modified. Thanks for the information, Miranda. I'll talk to you later. Of course, Commander. Whatever you need. Very pale. Whoever modified her really wanted her to look just like that. Chef surprise again. Come on, Rupert. I'm sorry, Princess. Filet mignon and caviar coming right up. Let me just get out my doilies. That'd be real nice, Mr. Gardner. Commander Shepard, the hero of the Citadel. You did humanity proud that day. As Sergeant Rupert Gardner here. How can I be of service? What do you do here on the Normandy? What don't I do? Most think of me as the ship's cook, but I'm also the facilities technician and custodian. HVAC, plumbing, non-mission critical electrical, I make sure they're all clean and running. I love this. So the man cleaning the toilets is also preparing the meals. I wash my hands. <laughs> Most of the time, this ain't a luxury liner. You have to pull your own weight in a Cerberus vessel. And I catch what falls through the cracks. <laughs> through the cracks. <laughs> they had a good time with this guy. Uh... How do you feel about working for Cerberus? Damn proud. Cerberus gets the job done. The Alliance and Council have got their heads buried so deep up their butt puckers they can't see squat. <laughs> butt puckers. It'll take good old human ingenuity to crush these collector vermin. Only Cerberus knows that. How did you find your way into Cerberus? Can you believe I was once a family man, working the Ezo rigs along the frontier? I was happy enough, but losing everything to Batarian raiders can change your outlook. I needed to make a difference. I'm no soldier, but I've got skills, and Cerberus keeps an eye out for talent. I'll do whatever it takes to help. Be that plumbing a sewer, routing an air duct, or keeping everyone's bellies full. You have everything you need. I make do, but have you ever tried to prepare a decent meal with military provisions? I'm good, but I'm no miracle worker. Taking down the collectors is going to be rough business. The crew deserves a few fine meals before they throw themselves into the fire. What do you need? If I had some quality ingredients... Oh, shit. You've got more to worry about than grocery shopping on the Citadel. Forget I mentioned it. If I head that way, I'll keep an eye out. Much appreciated. Most of this list is probably standard fare for those namby pambies on the Citadel. I feel like I recognize this guy's voice. Like to talk about? I won't take any more of your time. Back to work. There are the sleeping pods here. I run really ridiculously. Mess sergeant. Alright, let's go where the chalk was used to be. Uh, and apparently it still is. What's this area of the ship? The sick bay. It is equipped to provide short-term emergency care. In the event of critical injury, personnel must be transferred to a fully equipped medical facility. 
Alrighty. Isn't that where babies are from? Oh, there's, a, there's a freaking computer popped out of that! A keyboard! What's up? Attention to detail. AI core? Where? Oh, this thing. Dr. Commander Shepard, I watched the Normandy crumble with you on board. It's good to see you alive. Nice to see a familiar face, Doctor. I feel the same. I wish more of the original crew could be here. The kind of trauma you endured would have changed most people. But not you, I see. Welcome back, Shepard. Doctor, you've been with the Alliance for years. Why leave now? After the Normandy was lost, the surviving crew was reassigned. I was stationed at the Mars Naval Medical Center. A very respectable position, but it wasn't on a starship. Colonial military life isn't for you? I've spent most of my life on warships, never knowing what the next mission might bring. I'm used to the hum of engines, the creaking of bulkheads, that subtle vertigo when the momentum dampeners kick in. Life planet side is just too static, too boring. You're not the Cerberus type, Doctor. I don't work for Cerberus. I work for you. On a mission that may be crucial to the survival of the human race. I have faith that your dealings with Cerberus will be ethical. I trust you, Commander. There's a very good chance this mission will be a one-way trip. Are you prepared for that? I've been through the reclaiming of Shanxi. The Scillian Blitz. We survived the Battle of the Citadel and the destruction of the Normandy together. I've lived a full life. No regrets. I'd like to make sure the crew gets the same opportunity. You have everything you need. I believe so. This medical bay seems very much like the sick bay on the original Normandy. Only thing missing are my private reserves. I even had a bottle of Ceres Ice Brandy that I was saving for a special occasion. I'll keep an eye out for a replacement bottle. Oh, you needn't. It's expensive, and we have much larger concerns ahead. I'll see you later, Doctor. Commander. You go back to your... I don't know, Mass Effect space, Facebook tweeter. Anyway, right, another floor down. Let's go to... Engineering. So we got a couple of friendly faces. Three if you count seeing what's her face, uh, Tally. The codex entry. What's this area of the ship? Normandy's cargo deck. It includes facilities to rearm and repair Normandy's embarked ground vehicle and shuttle. My last ship didn't need a shuttle. Why do we have one? This ship is nearly twice the mass of the previous Normandy. It is more difficult to land the ship on high gravity worlds. That's the not Mako. Right. There's no use for me going downstairs. I don't believe so. Oh, hey. What's this area of the ship? This is main engineering, which contains the ship's main fusion plant and Mass Effect core. Mass Effect core. And there's Edie. Look at that. I wonder what's being emitted from it. I wonder if that's shielding and cold air. It's probably cold air. My i7 processor can run circles on Edie. You came all the way down here to see us? You're speaking to our commanding officer. I didn't hear an officer on deck. I run this ship military. Hey, hey. You two think this is all a joke? <laughs> yes, sir. I mean... Yes, sir. <laughs> I love it. Again, sir. At ease. Who are you? I'm engineer Ken Donnelly handling the power control systems. This is Gabby. That's engineer Gabriella Daniels, actually. I'm responsible for the propulsion systems. What can we do for you, Commander? Service, service, Felix the Separus and training. Where did you receive your training? Both Gabby and I started in the Alliance, serving on the SSV Perugia. She flew in the first wave at the Battle of the Citadel. We saw Sovereign firsthand. Why did you leave the Perugia? After you died, that weasel Udina backslid on the Reaper menace. They discounted Sovereign as an isolated threat, as a single... Which was bullshit. They said your warnings of a greater danger were mistaken or delusional. 
We lost respect for Alliance leadership. We need to fight the real enemy, and only Cerberus seem to be doing that. How did you wind up with Cerberus, Ken? Once you were gone, the Alliance brass descended like vultures, tearing apart everything you'd said. I was very public with my defense for you. I didn't hold back. That's an understatement. If Kenneth wasn't such a talented engineer, they'd have court-martialed him for insubordination. But it got me noticed by the elusive man. He made an offer, and here I am. Uh, so why did you join, Gabby? Kenneth and I have been partners in crime since we graduated from Tech Academy. When he got the Cerberus offer, I insisted that it include me. He'd fall apart without me. Thanks, Mum. Also, I love engines, and the Normandy is state-of-the-art. When I got the opportunity to work on her, I had to jump. What do you think about Cerberus? Actually, we don't know much about the organization other than the Normandy team. We know our mission and who's in charge. We're off to kick the collectors right in the daddy bags. That's enough for <laughs> Daddy bags. I love the writing in this. Are you set up okay down here? We can't complain. I just wish it didn't take so long to calibrate the FBA arrays. Kenneth, you're complaining. What kind of problems are you having? When they upgraded the Normandy design, they got a bit sloppy with the FBA couplings. I won't bore you with the tech, but there's an array of attenuators in the primary power transfer system that channels the field bleed. Kenneth, you're boring the commander with tech. In short, if we had T6 FBA couplings installed, it'd save us a lot of maintenance time each day. Why isn't something like that already installed? It's probably just a design oversight. Efficiency isn't affected. It's a maintenance issue. Also, the T6 model can be hard to find. Nash and Stellar Dynamics discontinued them. We could probably find used ones in the Omega markets, but we have no time for shore leave. Carry on. Well do, Commander. All right. Cufflinks for the ship. I told you he would. All right. Let's show you all the rest of this ship. If I can maneuver around it. I'm moving all jittery because I'm using mouse and keyboard. But I like the aiming on it. I guess this is under Edie. Alright. This way? This way? Yeah. And then the elevator. And then we are heading here. I already read my private Merbob. So. Uh, yeah, let's open it up. All right, so a little bit about what's happening here. So before you just kind of clicked where you wanted to go, here you actually kind of fly. We have this thing as fuel. So that's the top circle. I have no fuel. And then uh, my money is the middle one. And then the bottom one are probes. And I'll show you what probes are in a little bit. Let me uh, buy a few. And then we we use you know you you, you use the uh, merbobs by actually like flying to it. It's not much different except it takes a little longer to actually get to places. Uh, and we like I said, you don't need fuel. If I didn't say you don't need fuel fuel to fly around here. You need fuel for tr uh, intergalactic travel. So in terms of probes, you can click this merbob. And then you, you know you scan, and so what this is is basically a mini game to find resources. And what you do, you see how this thing is going nuts. Shoot a probe there. Research projects. Palladium is used to upgrade heavy pistols, armor, and cybernetics. Thank you, Edie. So basically, you run around, clicking. Clicking on planets and projects. Platinum is used to upgrade sniper rifles, shotguns, and medical equipment. You you fly around the you know you rotate the planet and basically try to find where it's really high. Um, listen to those sound effects for it to give you a clue. So I'll do that off camera. It's not really interesting. You'll you just do that until you def, you know you drain the planet. I look ridiculous. But this is your boy. Now that looks cool. <laughs> your boy, Black Captain. I'm stepping off for the next episode. We'll be heading towards uh, Omega, I think, and getting us a scientist. I'll do the probe stuff off camera. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Peace.